Hey everybody, welcome into the spread, Nesson.com's football picks podcast. I'm Nesson.com's Mike Cole, joined as always, uh, flanked to my right by Ricky Doyle, and to my left by Andre Kachaturian. Uh, we, ba- we are back to uh, give you all of the best and the brightest of NFL against the spread picks in week two. Uh, guys, yeah. uh, Ricky, you and I were just talking off air. Yes. Uh, a pretty standard... As we often do. Yes, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I was going to say pretty... It definitely was a pretty standard week one. I was, I was going to say quiet. I don't think it was quiet, thanks in large part to Antonio Brown. That kind of mm. overshadowed a lot of things. But uh, the on-the-field stuff I thought was kind of not what we necessarily expected, but there was nothing too crazy. Yeah, no, I thought it was a very... I have no real complaints, but I also have yeah. no, not a glowing review either. Yeah, like no. It was more or less just... Uh, par for the course. I will say it was nice. Uh, it was, as I will say, real quick, Sunday was a good bounce back from Thursday. So, and the, yeah. and the thing about <laughs> Sunday, too, is that, uh, especially locally, I mean, we all three of us root for different football teams, which is kind of an odd thing in, ter- in terms of uh, where we live. But, you know, you're a Patriots guy. I like the Packers. You like whoever's <laughs> playing well. Uh, but at least for us, I thought it was nice to get – uh, get the Thursday night game. I watched the Packers in full. We had the Sunday night game watching the Patriots in full. And then in between, we had all day Sunday to kind of bounce around, do the red zone thing. I got a lot of – I saw a lot of the league this week. It was, it was good. I mean, there was a lot of good games. There was a lot of bad games. It was – I th- you phrase it best. It was par for the course. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. I, I don't know if you guys have Chargers, heard this. Chargers-Colts was a good game. Yeah. Which for week one, I'll take that. You know what yeah, I mean? right. Like That's right, yeah. Because you're expecting a lot of uh, – you know, it just some rust maybe out of the yeah. gate. Week one tends to be a little, you know, a little sloppier than the rest of the week. So yeah, sure. Tell you what, I didn't like that, that uh, late touchdown by the Redskins with six Love seconds that. left. Um, it just ruined my pick. In Patty Mac special. Love that. Um, should I go? Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go to record. Yeah, I mean, well, here's how we did last week. <laughs> yeah, so records last week, uh, Mike, you and I oh, led the way oh. with nine six and one records. Oh, Ricky, right behind us with eight seven and one. That's we bo- incredible. We all did well. Pat's on the back uh, to us. If that Eagles game, that, if that switched, that would have won the week. But it's okay. which is th- so. This it's is a point where we should emphasize that we do pick every game that you can we see do. on Nessa.com yes. on Thursdays. Yeah, well. Yeah, God willing. Yeah. It was not on Thursdays this week. Yeah. That's my bad. Real busy week last week, but we'll be That's much not, better. No. Uh, I will also that. add that uh, the teams that won the turnover battle last week, 10-2-1 okay. against the spread. The teams that won the yards per play battle last week, yards per play differential, 9-6-1. Uh, and one. So the turnover battle is a good indicator. Go. Went in some credence to uh, some theories that have been tossed around here on the spread. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one week. I know, but, but the, you know, it's 16 games. I'm right? shocked to hear the team with more yards and was able to hold the other team to fewer yards did well. And one I mean, nine, game. six, and one. Though. There were six teams yeah, I, that so went against the spread true. When, when they a lot, had fewer yards. I will say, too, uh, I have it in my notes here. The teams that scored more points went 16 and 0 straight up. Well, actually, <laughs> 15 and 0 straight up. We had a tie mixed in there as well. Uh, uh, 15 and 0. Because you said that, I'll add that I went 2 and 0 in my locks and up- upsets. Because yeah. you were making fun of me. I'm just going to bullshit. Yeah, I did not. I. And Mike, you went 0 and 2 in the blocks and upsets. I'm so. And you went 0 1 and 1. How how does that happen? Like I, I don't understand it, and it screws me in my pools. It didn't do us very well in the super contest. I've done really well, the, especially the last two years overall with my picks. I can never narrow it down to five or three or two or whatever. I it's just so, I'm dumb. I feel like we were backwards blind maybe luck then. a little bit. What it's do you mean? Like, because we identify the three games that we want to so, talk about, yeah, and then like by the we don't want to have a lot of overlap. I feel like so that's exactly like, so what it is. That's a great. Eventually, point. you get to a very like finite yes. number of games. It's just like you know two or three games to pick from because that like right. yeah, it, it makes just, you think maybe, whether we should re- was, re- investigate should, yeah. uh, how we do that. But I will say like no one's gonna pick from the three games. No one's gonna pick those as a lock. <laughs> Well, I mean, very there, rarely. There's definitely an upset potential in there, upset and also I think to, I think Ricky's greater point is that like if I get my locks and upsets in early, then it, you know it reduces the pool from which you guys can choose, yeah. right? And, yeah. and vice, vice versa. versa. Yeah. So it's tough. It, it, like I, there's been plenty of weeks where you get to a point and you're like, I'm really, and then like bye if weeks. there's also but there's bye weeks. If there's like the line comes out late, that's the I mean, other thing too. We're screwing ourselves a little are. bit. Injuries. Yep. You know if the in, if the injury report. I mean we're doing this in full. What's the word? Full disclosure? Full disclosure. Yeah. We're doing this on Tuesday morning. Uh, the, We're less the, than 12 One of the Monday night games. Yeah, finished <laughs> 12 hours one, ago. So. so 
Uh, now that we've made all of our excuses, we're why just don't hedging we, our bets. Uh, we did well. We, just <laughs> we did, yeah. We yeah, usually do well. We usually do well. All right. Any uh, anything else we want to touch on from week one? I guess uh, underdogs uh, in fa- favorites were nine six and one against the spread last week. Home teams five ten and one uh, against the spread last week. So the road teams did pretty well there. Uh, anything else here? F- five straight up underdogs won. Eh, not a whole lot else to kind of get to. Uh, the over nine and seven last week as well. So. All right, good slate of games this week. Not bad, and I think uh, you know for the first time viewers or listeners of the spread. Uh, and by the way, you can also listen to the spread uh, if you're not already doing that. You can listen uh, on iTunes and Nesson Podcast Network. Go check that out. Make sure you subscribe, rate, even maybe review. Uh, tell us how bad you think we stink. But at least if you give us a five star review, I don't really care. Uh, so yeah, we'll make uh, we'll do the three best games of the weekend, or the three biggest games, or the three you know dart throw games that we found uh and then we'll give locks upsets and then we will get the hell out of here uh are we good i'm good all right let's start uh, another nfc north clash for the green bay packers they host uh the minnesota vikings packers won last week that uh, thursday night game ricky alluded to uh green bay escaped with a 10-3 win uh at soldier field in a, a low scoring mm-hmm. uh, contest uh where defense ruled the day minnesota meanwhile jumped out to a 28 nothing lead over atlanta uh, and held on for a 28-12 win. Uh, Packers three-point favorites here. It looks like two-thirds of the bets currently stands are coming in on Minnesota. Uh, weather doesn't seem to be an issue. A little bit breezy, but nothing too uh, too big to worry about. Ricky, why don't you kick us off here with uh, the Packers laying three? All right. We uh, So we talked last week uh, a lot about the Vikings and how their offense sort of evolved towards the end of last season, how they ran the football more and had some success doing so. Obviously, they uh, that has carried over into this season. Uh, I don't know if you can win a lot of games with Kirk Cousins throwing the ball just 10 times, but I yeah. think in general, I think they might be onto something with that, that offensive formula. To sort of be that run first team, uh, rely on your defense, which you know is almost the same as last yeah. year. Um, and I just think that they, they could be a very efficient offense, and that overall that's just a good formula to work for them this year. Uh, I like the Vikings in this game. Uh, I think that the Packers' offense might have some similar struggles against that Vikings' defense, especially that secondary. Uh, I'm still a little up and down on Aaron Rodgers' targets. I mean, the, yep. the receivers not gaining a lot of separation there. So I just think that the Vikings are sort of finding something that works in them offensively, and then defensively, I think they'll be able to shut down the Packers' offense too, to some extent at least. And also, I mean, we touched on the past few. The Vikings uh, usually start fast, so it was really no surprise that they came out guns blazing in week one. Um, I think that carries over at least one more week. So I, I like the Vikings. Uh, I like the fact that they're getting points as well, even though they're on the road. I disagree with you, Ricky. You have to take a, into consideration that the Falcons turned the ball over three times in that game against the Vikings. You know what Aaron Rodgers does? You can criticize Aaron Rodgers for everything you want, but he never turns the ball over. Uh, he hasn't thrown a pick at home since September of last year. And I think he's thrown something like three interceptions. Pretty sure it was pit, uh, tip, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, nuts. He has, he's thrown like maybe three interceptions in the last two seasons at home. I don't think he's going to make any mistakes. Uh, I also don't trust Dalvin Cook yet. He had a great game last game, uh, but he's never had back-to-back 100-yard games. And You're he, very down on Dalvin Cook. I, I'm not a big fan of him. I, he just, <laughs> look, at his, look at his game log of his career. Just nothing impressive. They did run him a lot more, pretty good right but now. He, he was great in week one. Yeah, he was great. He proved me wrong in week one. I picked the Falcons, and I... I think Adam Thielen was like, call him... One of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the NFL. Let's slow down on that. Right, let's, get old. But, uh, let's dial it back. What, what happens if Cook can't run against his Green Bay defense, which I like? They showed that they can stop the run in their week one game against Chicago. Kirk Cousins is going gonna to have to throw the ball more, and that that's not going to bode well for the Vikings. And Packers pass rush, five sacks in week one. That game against the Bears combined ten sacks in that game. And also, Packers are 1-5-1 and one in their last seven games against the Vikings. They're going to be at home. They're going to be fired up. This is a new Packers vibe. I'm feeling something different I saw in week one. They're not just a, you know, air it out with Aaron Rodgers type of team. They have a solid defense. They're a very balanced team. And I like, I, I like what I'm seeing from them. And I think they're going to win at home against a Vikings team. And it's only, what, a two-and-a-half point spread? Give me that. Yeah. Well, we have it as three. But is that three? It's right. two-and-a-half. I love it. Uh, I'm going to take the Packers as well. And I... When I first looked at this, I, I was leaning Minnesota because there are a lot of things going against Green Bay here. Uh, Kirk Cousins, by the way, 2-0-1 in his career against the Packers. That doesn't seem right. But uh, actually, that might not include the one playoff, playoff game. Yeah. 
But he's uh, in regular season games at least 2-0-1, uh, completing 73% of his passes, 10 touchdowns, one pick, and a 129 passer rating. Packers 0-6-1 against the spread, last seven games after an against the spread win. All of that, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to go against it uh, because I just – Minnesota's won the last three games against the Packers as well. Uh, but I, I, I kind of am with you. It does feel like a different team. I don't want to totally overreact, but that defense looked good. If the, at the very least, it looked like it had a, sw- a lot of swagger. It's going to be playing confidently. Uh, extra rest this week against uh, the Vikings coming off the Thursday yeah. night game for the Packers. I think, I think it's you know one thing to kind of point out about what Minnesota did last week, and you kind of touched on this as well, Andre. They had two touchdown drives that started inside Atlanta territory, one at the 21-yard line and one at the 41-yard line. Uh, I looked up. Uh, but, but, uh, did I, uh, they only went the length of the field once. Uh, meanwhile, Green Bay, This I thought this was interesting. J.K. Scott might have been the MVP last week for the Packers, which is a 10-3 game that makes sense. He's their punter. Uh, Gr- Chicago's average start or average drive start came on their 20, own 27. Wow. Uh, and their ten of their, their final ten drives started the twenty five or worse, including six from the fifteen yard line and in. So uh, if the Packers can tilt the field, they're going to make the uh, Minnesota go a long way. Uh, also, you know, I still have questions about the Vikings' pass block. If, if the Packers can get, you know, do a good job on first and second down and put Minnesota, and clearly the Vikings don't want to throw the ball, like obviously, uh, and for good reason. Uh, Pro Football Focus ranks the Vikings' pass blocking the worst among all 28 teams that didn't play uh, Monday night. And also, I, I do think it's worth noting, uh, Minnesota likely will be, out with, be without Mackenzie Alexander. He, I think he dislocated his elbow, which sounds very painful. Uh, quarterbacks last year had an 85.6 passer rating targeting him, including Aaron Rodgers, 39.6 in their Week 12 loss to Minnesota. Uh, so I think that maybe one more week of uh, you know a little extra rest, a little extra preparation, a little more, one more week with that offense, they, they look a little bit better offensively because I do think the biggest issue for the Packers is whether they can score points, which is feels like we're in a bizarre world, but that's kind of where we're at right now. What yeah. the hell were the Bears doing last week? But that's, that's the thing. Don't overreact to that. That was a very So that's my other thing, too. Defense. Well, I don't want to overreact to the, the Packers' defense yeah. either. I don't, you know. Yeah, no, of I, I, yeah as I was going to say, I think it was a trash game plan yeah. in general from the Bears. The Packers did do a good job of bottling up the run, and that was one thing I thought the, the Bears probably – maybe should have tried a little bit more of. That's what got him in trouble week one last year against the Packers. The Packers gave up 120 yards on the ground last year per game. So I think this is going to be a blowout. Packers are going to blow out the Vikings. Huh. Because I think the Vikings are so obsessed with trying to run the ball, and they're going to try to do it so much, and they're just going to get all these three and outs. Packers are going to get the ball. They're not going to turn the ball over and go down the field for a lot of points. And the Vikings are still going to try to run the ball. Oh, second quarter, we're down by 14, but let's still get the run going. See, I felt like let's the, not get the Bears... The run. Had the opposite. And it's not going to work. I think they were forced in the pass a little too much. I think they ran like 52 pass plays to, saying, to yeah. 13 run plays. Yeah. So, I, I mean. It's, so it's a questionable move when you got Mitch Trubisky. That's what I'm saying. It's like you polar opposite of what you're expecting going in this game. I don't know if it's the element of surprise they're going for or what. I kind of. I'm uh, very, like, I'm just sold on. I'm not sold on Dalvin Cook and apparently. I keep doubling down on it. So this. If I backfire back-to-back weeks betting against Dalvin Cook, then maybe I have to look in the mirror and just reevaluate everything. Kind of like I might little, lean towards the under. I was going to say that's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. A little play on the under here. The total set at 44 and a half right now. I think this feels like a 21-24-17 Packers win. 10 1 p.m. start. Red Zone's going to be fun. Love it. But then the, the 4 p.m. game is... Uh, yeah, that's all right. Get you know, get right with God. See your family. Do whatever you got to do <laughs> Sunday get afternoon. Right with God. <laughs> all right. Uh, I was going to say, speaking of getting right with God, but I really don't have a transition here. We have uh, the Saints. Man. The Saints. God oh, wow. damn it. Perfect it's transition. Layup. It was a perfect. <laughs> it was a layup. Jesus. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, all right. So the Saints, this is the definition of a revenge game. Oh. Oh. Uh, but it's in Los Angeles. The Saints have to go cross country uh, to take on the Rams in a rematch of the, that was the NFC championship game, correct? I'm not, I, sometimes it's easy to forget because, like, two years ago, the mm-hmm. Minnesota Miracle was in the – yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, that would have made sense because then the, the Vikings would have went to the Super Bowl. But then whatever. I'm an idiot. Uh, Saints go to Los Angeles. <laughs> Saints coming off their Monday night win uh, against Houston while the Rams uh, eked out a win at Carolina. Uh, again, this game is in California with the Rams laying three points against the Saints. Uh, a, a huge game, really, especially down the low line in terms of home field advantage. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. The uh, total pretty high set at 53 and a half right now and 60% of bets already coming in on New Orleans. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, weather not going to be an issue, obviously, because of L.A. Andre, who do you got here? Saints. 
<laughs> Who that? <laughs> we'll right um, along. All right, Ricky. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid fire. No, um, I like the Saints. Uh, just the, the, obviously the revenge factor, whatever. Everyone knows all about what happened, and they're gonna be fired up and whatnot. But the Rams just don't really have much of a home field advantage either. Even last year. Oh, that's a good point. Four, four. This is one. gonna be like home game for the Saints. It's basically, be every yeah, exactly. It's, it was, I think the Rams were four, four and one against the spread at home last season. That's bad. Uh, this is their first home game. And what was wrong with their offense last? They scored 30 points, but they averaged uh, fewer than five yards per play in their uh, week one win mm-hmm. over Carolina. And they also allowed nearly six yards per play. They had a very large negative yards per play differential, but they still ended up winning the game. That might not, that formula might not work against the Saints. Uh, obviously, Drew Brees showed uh, no signs of regression after a uh, disappointing again to the 2018 season. He was fantastic yesterday. Uh, and. Todd Gurley, does he, what was it, Malcolm Brown had like 11 carries in that game, or yeah. he had more than 10 carries in that game, and it looks like they're trying to stay away from Todd Gurley a lot, and uh, why are you shaking your head at me? Well, my fantasy team, I have Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson, and Daryl Henderson was supposed to be the two, yeah. and they gave it to Malcolm Brown. So you weren't shaking I, your head at me. <laughs> no, I wasn't. At, yeah, uh, Sean McVay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly who I'm shaking my head at. Uh, so I, if Gurley's not getting a big workload, uh, maybe Jared Goff will be pressured to throw again. You have the box score up yeah. here. He threw the ball 39 times last game and only For 186 yards. yards. That's pretty that's impressive. Not, that's not good. <laughs> um, again, and Drew Brees generally gets good uh, pass protection. And Saints had six sacks. Against the Texans in it's week a one, very bad offensive line. It is, but they had Larry Tunsil who was supposed to who, do something for them. And let's like, let's not forget, lost it didn't look there. very good. The Rams have lost some key pieces on their offensive line in the off season. It's not as good as it used to be last year. So uh, let's let's go uh, let's go with the Saints. Yeah. Okay. See, what is it? Pick them right now. What did you say? One point. Pick them. Three. It's three. Three points. So uh, even better. Give me three points at the Saints. Ah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Are you making that. these picks without knowing the spreads or what? <laughs> I, 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 maybe. I'm glad you mentioned the, the losses of the offseason because I feel like this is a week in which uh, the point Saints point. feel the loss of Max Unger retiring, going up against Aaron Donald in that defense. Eric McCoy, their rookie starting center, held his own this past week, but uh, I think this is a week where you sort of see that hurt them a little bit. Uh, also, the Saints gave up 180 rushing yards to the Texans. Or almost eight yards a carry. This is a team that was sort of built around their run defense last year. I mean, that was a, it was a strong unit. No coincidence that they're missing uh, Sheldon Rankins, Mario Edwards. You know, some injuries already along that defensive line. So this is a week where you know you mentioned the Todd Gurley thing. Like, what are you going to get from him? It's pretty clear though they're going to make a concerted effort to to save him for later in the game. So maybe this is sort of a grind in the early going, and then you ride Gurley down the stretch. I don't know. This is one where I, I'm taking the Rams, and it's it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a hunch, I'd say, involved. Later as in well. the game or later in the season, though. Maybe both. you just. Stay. Yeah, can you have both? Yeah, you could. You later in the game, you know, you ride Malcolm Brown for a little bit, and then you. Clearly, they were doing a good end. job getting first downs because they let Carolina back in that game in Week One, late in the game. Well, Todd Gurley, 64 yards in the fourth quarter, so mm. they're milking Smart. the clock. Worked well. Yeah. I don't know. Give me the Saints. Uh, it was a tough spot last week for the Rams. You know, it's a tough road game to open the season. Uh, not surprising they struggled a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take them to win and cover here. Uh, Saints, this early season stuff is for real. Like, I think they, they didn't play very well uh, for parts of that game uh, Monday night. And kind of, they, they clearly they didn't cover the spread. They're now 1-10 in 10 against the spread in the first two weeks of the season since 2014. You want to go back to the last 16 games? Uh, in the first two weeks, uh, they're two and fourteen against the spread. That's the regress of the mean, right? <laughs> or you just keep riding it until it. Uh, I, I think you know. this is a good Saints team. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm with Ricky. Uh, the run defense seems like maybe having a bit of an issue for uh, the uh, excuse me the Saints. Uh, I also think this is something I mentioned it was either last week or in the preview episode. In the preview episode, the Saints' issues with covering slot receivers continues to be quite a quite a problem. Uh, and I think you know, they got a guy when you know, signed Patrick Robinson was the last year or whatever. Now he's relegated to sp- he played like three snaps on Monday night, just all special teams. So they've been using PJ Williams out of the slot, uh, their slot corner. He had a 146.9 passer rating against Monday night against the uh, against the Texans. And now you get Cooper Cup. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, you get whoever else they can do. They want to put Robert, uh, not Robert Woods, uh, Brandon Cooks in the slot. Uh, I think I saw a stat somewhere 
Uh, Jared Goff targeted slot receivers the third most of any quarterbacks last year, so I think that's going to be a main principle for their uh, game plan against the Saints, and I think they find a way to get it done. Uh, for uh, those reasons, the ones that Ricky mentioned as well, I really like the uh, the Max Unger point too. That's you know maybe that's something where they start. I saw you know I remember Clay Matthews had a lot of success rushing from the middle. With yeah. Green Bay maybe try to gut. I mean, if stuff, there's anybody yeah. that's going to overpower you. Yep. Keep in mind, One the turnover thing. battle, too. I, I trust Breeze uh, protecting the that, football yeah. more than Jared Goff. Uh, Short week for the Saints, too. Is on the it is, yeah. One it thing that does scare the daylights out of me, though, is you look at the success that Christian McCaffrey just had. Yeah, that's the one against thing. Against the Rams. Against Zega Kamara. Now you're getting Kamara. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is funny, it's though, basically last week, I said the Rams that were the good Rams against, were really yeah. good against pass catching running backs. He allowed the fourth fewest uh, receiving yards to running backs yeah. last year, and then... I mean, that was last uh, year. Kamara year. also had success. If you go back to that NFC Championship yeah, game, yeah. not so much on the ground, but I think he had 10 or 11 catches and almost 100 yards. So the New Year, maybe they're not going to be good against pass catching running backs this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's, we, we disagree, Ricky. Back some, to back uh, times. some value maybe if a little late, early season, late, you know, didn't get in before the season started. Uh, value in taking uh, Christian McCaffrey as the MVP if he stays healthy. That's Everything goes through him. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a freak. He's so that. good. Uh, he's so good. That's like the main game in the 4 o'clock slot. What? Like the that Rams game? Saints. Yeah. Like, yeah. forget red zone. Put that game on. Yeah. Maybe during a commercial break, you can switch to red zone. Or you can go to the restroom or grab another snack. One of those three <laughs> options. <laughs> Don't do anything else. No. Just have it. I'll have you over Sunday so you can walk me through this. <laughs> <laughs> No, Ricky, you put down that book. <laughs> yeah. We're not reading. We're not doing that. Not it's doing that. Snack. Only one piss, piss break. break. <laughs> <laughs> or red zone. It's hard to take a piss break during red zone. Let me tell you. It, it is. A, I went from the mid middle of the first quarter to at least until halftime in week one. And I had to go. But it's just like they keep switching. And yeah. it's like good things are happening. Ravens keep throwing touchdowns. I want to see it. It is awesome. Not to get off the diaper. I was doing the, I was chopping veggies. While watching, because <laughs> I can see that, like, there's my, I can see into it, my living room from my kitchen, and I like, I looked up after, or not looked up, I looked down after like five minutes. I hadn't chopped anything because I'd keep, I, I'd start chopping, and then I hear Hanson's voice go up and be like, "What? What's going on here?" So yeah, probably pretty dangerous too. Actually. Yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> you can show up on your birthday. Next I got week all, with no fingers. I got all my phalanges <laughs> for now, but we'll see. All right. Um, what is Sunday, Sunday night. night Sunday night. Oh. Another good Sunday night. Well, oh, this past Sunday good sucked. Match. But, um, so this one's interesting. The Eagles are going to go to Atlanta to take on the Falcons uh, in, a, in a matchup of birds, as Andre <laughs> just alluded to. The line opened at uh, Atlanta being favored by one. So quickly got bet oh, back yeah. the other way. Uh, 80% last time I checked of the bets are coming in on the Eagles. The Eagles are now one-point favorites. I have to imagine that line might slide even more by the time even this show gets up. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. But So as it stands right now, Eagles are one-point road favorites at Atlanta. The Eagles have won the last three games against the, uh, the Falcons. Does that the, include the NFC Championship? Yes, it does. The total um, is at 51. One thing to note, uh, in those three games – the they were low scoring. Uh, Philly won 18 to 12, 15 to 10, 24 to 15, which might be another tangent. Side note: the most, the weirdest collection of three scores in NFL history: 18, 12, 15, 10, and 24, yeah. 15. Uh, you don't last see that week, very long. Week one, right? They they played. Yeah, week, it was week, week one. one, was one that 18, 12 game. was terrible. So <laughs> all right, hopefully they they get things together this week. Ricky, who do you like here with the Eagles laying one? Well. For the reasons that you mentioned, this line shifting, that's what's staring me towards the Falcons right now. Like, I, I feel like... Everything, I'm not going to... I don't want to tip my hand or interrupt you too much. Everything points to the Eagles here. So, no, Well, know. I'm fading the public. No, I, I am yeah. too. That's my, but I'm it, saying it, there's it makes, a lot of reasons to take the Eagles here. It's like 80% of the money coming in right now yeah. on the Eagles as of Tuesday. Um, I, it's, it just feels, and I think you had said this before we came on, it feels like an overreaction. To week one, yeah. to an extent. I mean, you saw how explosive that Eagles offense looked. The Falcons couldn't get out of their own way. But I think ultimately these teams are, I think they're they're fairly even. Yeah. Um, and so maybe this is is the week where we start to see some strides from the Falcons defense. Uh, I think the Eagles defense going to have to go through a little bit of adjustment. I mean, they they got torched at times by Secondary the Redskins. Still stinks. Now they lose uh, Malik Jackson as yeah. well. So there's going to be some rotation going on on that defensive line, which. I mean, you just mentioned the secondary leaves a lot to be desired, so yep. maybe that has a trickle-down effect. 
I could just see Atlanta's offense coming out and, and putting up some points in this one. They're at home. I just think this is a good get-right spot for them. I absolutely agree with you, Ricky. Atlanta Falcons all the way. Uh, let me <laughs> give you a nice stat. You say everything's for the Eagles in this game. Rasul Douglas. <laughs> Look at these numbers. Oh, of course. I didn't factor in Rasul Douglas. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 this is... I feel bad dumping on the uh, Eagles secondary, too, after your Avante Maddox. Avante Maddox is fine. Uh, I... <laughs> Avante Maddox is fine in week one. Rasul Douglas got torched in week one. Five targets, four catches, 85 yards, two touchdowns. Case Keenum had a perfect passer rating against him. What do you think Matt Ryan's going to do to Rasul Douglas? They got so many receiver threats. They're going to be at home. They're a complete team. Last week was overreaction. And also Philly only allowed 28 rushing yards in week one to Washington. It's going to be a lot harder to do against Devontae Freeman. Washington was unable to run the ball late in that game. They allowed Philly to come back. But Atlanta gets up uh, early. They're going to be able to do that with Devontae Freeman. And uh, they're not, they're not going to struggle running the ball, kill some clock. And I think this is going to be a big win for the Falcons. Don't, don't overreact to week one. This is a big overreaction. That's clock. exactly – that's – so I guess when I started doing my notes, I you know it's just I think the big thing is the Philly pass rush, even without Malik Jackson and uh, Atlanta probably or actually is he was already on IR. Uh, they'll be without starting right guard Chris Lindstrom. He's got a foot fracture. Uh, we saw last week what happens when you get after Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan had a 28.6 passer rating under pressure last week, according to Pro Football Focus. Falcons one and nine and <clears throat> one and nine recently against the spread in games with a total of 49 and a half or higher. So I think it's one of those things where when you're expecting when you're expecting high scoring games, maybe that defense is a liability for them, where the offense doesn't come to play. Uh, so that's been an, an issue for them recently. But again, uh, everybody is on the <laughs> Eagles right now. Uh, I don't get it. So I'm going to take the Falcons as well for you know I, it's a big fade the public play. But again, I, I'm concerned about that secondary with the Eagles. Case Keenum, 30 of 44 for 380 and three touchdowns last week. That's yeah. insane. The Eagles, by the way, terrible tackling, especially early in that game. Did you guys see the Jordan Reed touchdown? Like he's hurtling guys, yeah. he's spinning around, looked like a guy playing Madden on easy. It's just he couldn't tackle him. Uh, you mean and, Jordan Reed or Vernon Davis? Or Vernon Davis. Yeah. Sorry, Jordan Reed. Yeah, one of the old guys. Uh, yeah. Vernon Davis, but Jordan Reed a, didn't play, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Jordan Reed might be done. Like he's had seven concussions in his career. Uh, the fact that Vernon Davis is doing that at that age is either uh, a hell of a mark for Vernon Davis or real issues with that Eagles tackling. I think it's the latter. Uh, Matt Ryan, by the way, much better at home. He had a, for his career, his passer rating is nine points higher at home than on the road. It was much bigger last year. It was a 20-point difference. Yeah. He was a 118 passer rating at home. Uh, they were a touchdown better uh, per game at home as well. So I think this is a nice spot for them. You know, Dan Quinn came out and ripped them. Uh, Dirk Cutter ripped them. Like this team, if, if they're not going to get right here, your, your season is done. So it's a lot of desperation here for them. And this is a team that, uh, you know, personally I had a lot invested in in terms of, you know, I think they're going to have a good season. So I think, you know, I kind of have to believe that they're going to get uh, right. Yeah, you just, I expect a big game from Calvin Ridley, too, because Julio Jones will get a lot of uh, coverage from yeah, I don't even know if that's going to matter. I, it's, it might not. Yeah. I, I, I like Calvin Ridley. Just, you know, you all think. the attention goes to Julio and then Took Calvin. Us, what, two weeks to piss off Eagles fans? <laughs> <laughs> they're the most that's boisterous the group in the well, comments I, last year. I picked the Eagles to go to the – it's just – I you're have gonna, them winning the Super Bowl. So, I, yeah, right. So let me just so just get that out in the open. Yeah, right? I have them going so to one, the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, it's one so. week, so. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a 16-week season, it, you it, losers. Week two, yeah. <laughs> you know, calm down. Yeah. You're going to lose some games. It just is what it is. By the way, uh, speaking of that, I don't know if we're going to get into this. Do either of you guys have the Patriots as your lock? <sighs> no. no. Uh, they're now – they're only like, Should we just do that right now? They're 20 to 1. To I'd go be nine. more apt to take them as, as the upset. It was 14 the and a half as an upset. So it's 19. Yeah, so they're 20 to 1 to go 19 and 0 this year. That's uh, that's insane. Like, that's not good value no. for a team to win every single football game <laughs> in place. It's never happened before in a 19 game schedule. So, uh, yeah, they were bet up to, it was like 14 and a half. It was 17 and a half yesterday. We wrote a story on Nesson.com. Now it's up to 19. Yeah, so I saw people yeah. saying, "Let's yeah, let's talk about this real quick before we get in. What's that number got to be before you even consider taking the Dolphins? Maybe it's I'm already starting there. to consider it, taking yeah. the Dolphins. Like, I don't want to give a spoiler. These but. guys are these guys are so, yeah. athletes. <laughs> they have pride. They have they have you know they're they're humans. They're reading everything, and everyone's saying bad things about them. It's kind of <laughs> like the Raiders situation. Like they were at home, they got fired up, and they came out on Monday night and they beat the Denver Broncos." 
on the last ever Monday Night Football game on the baseball field. It, it they're just I, I Patriots. I, I obviously win that game, but Ryan Fitzpatrick's a veteran quarterback. You don't say things like that to Ryan Fitzpatrick, that's right. <laughs> and 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 just may act like he's gonna lie down like a doormat. He's a matador, not a doormat. Well, well the thing is, like, yeah, you're like. It's like two random Ryan Fitzpatrick chucks away from covering. Yeah. So you know yeah. what I mean. Like I, I think uh, all things being equal, I'll, I'll, I'll roll with that. It's all just right. it's just so many points. And knowing the track record of them playing in my but like, like it is a lot of points. But it's not hard for them to score a lot of points. Like, yeah, but they've won. just they've struggled against garbage Dolphins teams in the past. I know it is. Now, Actually, right? I looked this up. This is just at home, so this doesn't really it's not appl- not very applicable. But the Patriots have won the last five home games against the Dolphins by a combined or by an average of twenty five points. <laughs> so like they can hang points on you. Hurry. <laughs> Obviously, it's been a much different story in Miami. But and those I mean, some like, of those teams have been really bad. Maybe not this bad, but they've yeah. been bad. They've been bad. There was a one in fifteen Dolphins team. Uh, that was in 07. How did that so, team yeah. do against the uh, Patriots? Since 2012, Patriots one and six straight up in Miami, two and five against the spread. That makes no sense. Yeah. So ne- and neither would but, neither would them covering this. Week. But like, I, see, I trends are so hard. I like I'm very picky pick or choose with trends. Like obviously it helps my argument. I like it, but I just don't see. There's no rhyme or reason no. to that, but it also makes it, sense mean, too. It's and weird. on the flip side, we did we mentioned last week too about how the Patriots have. Done well, not just covering the spread, but covering huge spreads. Yeah, like they've. Yeah, but this is a huge yeah, this spread. Is, this is That's a, this is the biggest spread that they've faced since 2007. Uh, they were 19 point favorites in a game against Baltimore that year on the road. Or excuse me, this is the biggest road uh, home, fa- biggest road favorite they've been since then. They were 19 point favorites going to Baltimore. They won 27 to 24, 2007. It's comical. Go look that story up on Nesson.com slash odds. Some comical point spreads from that 2007 Patriots team. I think we're going to get a lot of the same this year, obviously, because this yeah. schedule that they're playing on paper is not very good, at least not until the middle of the season. So, All right, let's do locks and upsets. Um, Andre, why don't you get us started with a lock? Okay, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Uh, two and a half point favorites when I checked on Monday night. I don't know if that's shifted or not, because that's a wild point spread against uh, this – Detroit Lions team. We're talking about a Super Bowl contender, uh, the L.A. Chargers. Where is, where, where is this? Uh, Chargers are uh, laying it's, it's two and a half. Two and a half, three, whatever. It's still very little. What do, what do I, 72% of uh, Ox Shark has the Chargers, which makes me want to go the other way, but come on, three points? Uh, two that and a half points against the Lions? Uh, Lions did have the fifth best yards play differential after week one, um, but that was against the rookie quarterback, Kyler Murray, not Phillip Rivers. Uh, and plus, the Lions eventually blew that lead and didn't cover the spread. Uh, I love Austin Eckler. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, component for that Chargers offense. He looked great in week one. I don't see that changing. I think he's going to be great against the Lions. Um, sure, Marlon Mack ran all over the Chargers in week one, but the Lions don't have that kind of a running threat. Um, and I think the Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram are going to have a coming out part against this Lions offensive line. They're gonna, the Lions will line allow three sacks in week one. And I think they're going to allow a few more this week. Take the Chargers. All right. Going with another game with a uh, big point spread. The Texans, nine and a half point favorites over the Jaguars in Houston. Uh, I like the Texans. Uh, we'll start with the obvious, being that there's the Jaguars are starting a uh, six-round draft pick at quarterback, Gardner uh, Minshew. I like him. Go Cougs. You know. I, I, I strongly this disagree just with you on this. Washington State What do you guy like about right there? Uh, not Gardner Minshew. I like the fact like that the Texans' offensive line, which struggled in Week One against the Saints, did you not just say you like Gardner Minshew, Minshew? Though I do, I like Gardner Minshew. Yeah. What do you like? Well, about that's him? what. I, yeah, that's he was fifteen for sixteen at one point. They it's did good. not. But there's not very uh, a lot of short passes. I don't know. There's an element of unpredict- unpredictability there. I, I, you know, I have no idea what you're going to get from him. Jeez. But also, I'm. And were you just about to mention the, the Jaguars' defense? Weren't you? Getting after, getting after the quarterback, ferocious pass rush against the uh, the turnstile offensive line that is the Texans. Yeah. I didn't think that Jaguars Jaguar defense. They got big names good. though. Yeah, they got big names. That doesn't matter. They seem lost against Kansas City. It's Kansas City. I get that. Hard to sack. But a lot of that Pat offensive Mahomes. success well, was like similar. busted coverages. How about Jalen Ramsey um, getting truck sticked in the middle of yeah, the field? Yeah, it just seems, seems like a team Watkins. that. And this could awesome. be a season-long issue. Just doesn't have its head on straight. Yeah, a lot of just Watkins had a game. Right? Yeah. Wild card components there. Um, so yeah, I, I I could see some more defensive struggles against the 
the Texans offense, uh, which obviously has some playmakers. Uh, and then on, on the flip side of things, like I said, I don't know what you're going to get from the rookie quarterback. And I think that the uh, Houston pass rush will have a little success against the uh, Jacksonville offensive line. So nine and a half points. Uh, it's a lot, but I like the Texans. Gardner. A lot of trends go against this one. Uh, a lot of pro Russell Wilson trends, uh, especially on the road as an underdog. But I'm going to take Pittsburgh Steelers to bounce back and cover three and a half point spread at home against Seattle. I like this stat a lot. This trend from Walter Football. Uh, Steelers eight and one against the spread after losing by twenty in the Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> era. So they bounce back under Big Ben. Uh, the fact that they've lost nine games by twenty or more in his career is kind of whatever. Yeah. But um, <laughs> most of them were probably against the Patriots. <laughs> um, but in addition to that, you know, Seattle coming cross country for an early game, whatever that means. Uh, Seattle can't block still. And that could be a problem yeah. against Pittsburgh. Uh, Steelers a very good pass rush, as you may have heard. Didn't see it on Sunday night, but that was a given because, you know, the Patriots. Uh, Seattle secondary, a bit of a mess, and that might get that uh, Pittsburgh offense going. I think we're going to see a, a Steelers team that looks a lot more what we expected from them uh, this week than we did last week, uh, although they do have a ton of injuries. Uh, T.J. Watt uh, banged up with a hip injury, Mike Pouncey an ankle, and Juju Smith-Schuster hurt his knee. So that's... Uh, that could be an issue. Yeah. So I reserve the right to change my mind at some point once we get the injury report. But if they're close to the same team, I, I like them to. You reserve the right to do whatever the hell you want. It's your birthday week. Not yet, but it will be next week. Well, 31. Huh? 31. It'll be 32. Oh, we'll have to contact the bakery this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make some arrangements. Yeah. No. I'll get the candles. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, upsets. Let's upsets. Get out of here. Uh, Andre, go ahead. I'm going to take the 49ers. They were underdogs. When I checked yesterday, or Monday, they're still underdogs. <laughs> what? what did it kill you to check it before you came in here? I mean, uh, you, I, I, I don't understand how they're underdogs against the... <laughs> you gotta know the underdog it's just, I just don't get how they're underdogs in this game against the Bengals. Sure, the Bengals look nice against the Seahawks, but the 49ers had two interceptions. What did I say last week? I said they will surpass their interception total in one game, and they did. They had three interceptions <laughs> and two pick sixes. I guess Jameis Winston. Jameis stinks. He stinks. Richard Sherman, yeah. I said, what did he say last year? He's nasty. old, but he's nasty. He's nasty. He's old, but he's <laughs> nasty. He's uh, opposing quarterbacks. Drew Adam, 172.6 targets last season. Best mark among corners last year. And he had a pick six in week one. And look at him. Tarverius Moore, man. Tarverius Moore, 42 coverage snaps, only two targets. And one of those targets could have been a pick six on the fourth and goal situation when the game was still within reach against the Bucks. I like Tarverius Moore. I like the Niners secondary. I think Andy Dalton's going to struggle. He was sacked uh, five times in week, in week <laughs> one. <laughs> Sorry. He was fired up about the 49ers. My NFC West champion pick. <laughs> My birthday week, your death week. Uh, when Richard Sherman, life. Richard yeah, Sherman had that uh, interception, I'm, I'm sitting there yelling at my TV, it's because they never throw at him. They're like, it's his first picks or first interception in like two years. It's yeah. like, because they never throw at him. It's nasty. It's nasty. Nasty and old. Old and nasty. Ricky. Uh, all right, so if the, if the Jaguars are the, the screwballs of the AFC South, <laughs> I think the, the Browns could make a case to be the screwballs of the AFC North. Uh, this could be an issue with them between the years with them all the all the hype coming into this season last yep. week not looking so hot uh, 18 penalties for 182 yards is not a good look for Freddie Kitchens his first game Freddie looks lost um I, yeah and, and you know on the road against the Jets who I'm, I'm taking in this one getting two and a half points uh the Jets obviously let that one slip away against the Bills but Le'Veon Bell looked pretty good for a guy who hasn't played in a year. Um, he still he looks like the same player. Yeah, very elusive. You know that sort of that running, patient running style. It's awesome. Just uh, it's that just catch he made too. Watching him is like oh, it's, it's fun. A, I like it's watching unla- him. Yeah, yeah, it's unlike any other running back. Um, and in that defense, that Jets defense is going to be pretty legit this year. So I think uh, while Cleveland ultimately might figure it out, win some games here and there, this they, they're going to run into some issues. I like the maturity of the Jets quarterback over the Browns quarterback. I, Sam Darnold looks like he's a veteran. Well, Baker Mayfield is, was a little too dangerous in week one. Yeah. Three interceptions. I will so. say, I did, uh, I did point that out last week, that that offensive line might be a bit of an issue. And then when they lost, uh, what's his face? He got kicked out in the middle of that game. That was tough. Yeah. Anyway, um, for my uh, upset, I'll take the uh, Colts. They are three-point road dogs at Tennessee. Uh, 
yeah, I liked what I saw out of Tennessee last week. Very good defense. I think the defense is going to be one of the better units in the league. But again, like I mentioned, it's going up against that Cleveland offensive line, which I don't think is very good. And it got worse as the game went on. I felt like, you know, the Browns, I kind of snowballed on them. It probably looks better after all the said and done for the Titans. Meanwhile, I thought Indy played a pretty competitive game, a game they should have won if Adam, Adam Vinatieri could, you know, do what he's been doing for the last 56 years and make a field goal. Uh, I think he cost them seven points. So you know, they kind of, you know, I don't love the fact that they're going back to back road games. That's pretty tough. And with the second one being a division game plus a lot of travel, but it's a team that's been through a lot of adversity already. I think they kind of bounce back uh, and at least give the, the Titans a game. Uh, you know, I I, it's just, they were better. Like they were better. I think they, they're at least better in the trenches than, Cleveland is or on the offensive line it's just it's not going to be as easy for the Titans I think if this game is close you know we've seen these AFC South games go either way so I like the the Colts here Jack Brissett 78 percent completion percentage uh, not they, bad. two they, touchdowns no picks they looked good or they looked fine at least I don't know that's it's a team that they'll probably maybe they go six and ten maybe they go seven and nine but you're gonna look back and be like they were competitive as hell yeah like they're they have the potential to be a team that's pain in the ass to pick their games each week yeah from it against the spread standpoint yeah because like if it goes like it wouldn't surprise you if like Brissett came out and threw like three picks this week and they just went sideways yeah you know what i mean there's gonna be a couple of games like that i think so yeah if he gets good protection you never know he again he was sacked uh 52 times in 2017 when yeah. he was the starter it's yeah. true yeah and i think they they like i said they there's good offensive line they should do a pretty good job yeah. so it'll be actually that's a sneaky decent game too yeah, yeah. good yeah. slate this week all right guys anything else no I'm hungry. I am too. Let's go eat. Okay. Let's go get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the SpreadNest.com's Football Picks Podcast. Uh, as I said earlier, go check us out on iTunes. It's on the Nesson Podcast Network. Uh, a lot of goodies in that Nesson Podcast Network. I know we have a uh, we have a Patriots podcast this week, Usually I would imagine. Out, yeah, yeah. Some, some time around. I know we've got a Red Sox podcast coming out. Ricky, you oh, and yeah. Dakota are going to talk about uh, the, the goings-on down on yeah, uh, Jersey Street. Yeah, they've got a couple Street. things going on. So. And uh, Logan Mullen and I will get together for a Bruins podcast this week to kind I of preview training camp. I know. I can't week. either. There's, there's preseason games next week. Yeah. It feels like last week I was at Hurricanes watching a uh, Bruins Blues game. Stanley Cup game. Wild. And so, uh, so extends our uh, <laughs> our streak of pretty much the entire entirety of this show, uh, where we talk about sports other than football at the end. So, <laughs> baseball playoff season's coming Love up that. too, oh, so yeah. it'll keep the going. Final minute grab bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go eat lunch. Uh, thanks for joining us. See you again next week.